So now that we've seen how to create and set up a brand new iOS project and we've landed inside Xcode, it's time to get an overview of this piece of software that we'll be using to do all of the work of building our iOS apps, including designing the app user interface, as well as programming the code for the functionality of the app. So the first thing you want to do, if you haven't already, is to expand your Xcode to take up as much space as you have on your computer. Now, I don't recommend going full screen because then it's harder to get access to the menu items and it makes it difficult dragging and dropping files into our Xcode project as well. So without having to go to full screen, make sure the Xcode window is as large as possible. And then we're going to go on a guided tour of the Xcode software. So the first place we're going to look at is the page that we land on when we first create an app, which is the general tab here. So you can always come back to the screen. If you select your project, go to the target. So this is your app and then go to the general section. And here we have bits of data that we've already entered, such as the display name and the bundle identifier, and you can change things such as the version. Now, scrolling a little bit further down, we've got information for how our app is going to be deployed. So when it's run, where is it going to be running on? So for example, we can change the iOS versions that we target and keeping in mind that this is going to be the minimum version that we want to target. So if we select iOS 13, then it means that anybody who has an iOS version that's above 13 will be able to use our app and download it. But if it's lower than that, then they won't be able to access it. So depending on how far back you want to support, you would select a minimum target here. And then we get to select whether our app should be able to run on iPad and iPhone or just the iPhone. Now, later on, we'll take a look at Project Catalyst, which will allow us to run our app on Mac as well. But for now, let's just keep everything as the default. And then let's take a look at where we get to select the device orientation. If you want your app to be able to display it in all four dimensions, so when you turn the phone, it should turn with you to show the app upside down, landscape left, right, then you have all these checkboxes checked. But if you want to limit it to only portrait or one particular landscape orientation, which you'll see in a lot of games, then you can select the ones that you need. But again, I'm going to leave it as the default. Now, finally, you get to choose your status bar style. So whether if you want a white status bar or a dark status bar, and whether if you just simply want to hide the status bar, you can set those things right there. That's pretty much all for the settings page. And some of these other tabs will explore as we build more and more complex apps that might actually need us to go into some of these settings and tweak them around. But in most cases, you'll be keeping these settings as the defaults and we'll be doing most of our important work inside the Swift files. So these are your code files and the storyboard files which are your design files. So notice how they have different icons depending on which type of file they are. So if you see the little Swift bird, that's a Swift programming file and the design files have a yellow icon like this. So this is a good time to point out that usually the default layout of Xcode is split into four areas. First, we've got the top status bar here which kind of reminds me at least a little bit of things like iTunes and other music players, because you have the play and stop buttons, you have the status of your app, and you have the selection for where you want to run your app. Now, if you hit the play button, it's going to run your app onto whatever device you selected here. And if you press stop, then obviously it just stops running the app. Now over here on the left hand side, we've got the navigator pane and inside each of these panes, there's further sub directories because there are lots of little tab bars. Now for most of these, I'm going to mention as they come up, as we have a need for them, but the most important one you'll always pretty much want selected is the project navigator here, the one on the left most. 
And this simply displays your project. So if I open my project inside the finder and I expand my project, my I am rich, then you'll see that each of these files correspond to what we see in Xcode in our project navigator. Now, because it usually takes multiple files to actually create a single app, it's really handy when we can see all of them at a glance right here where we need them. So when we need to go into our code, we can simply click into the view controller.swift. If we need to go into our design, then we click on our main.storyboard. Now the main.storyboard is where you'll be designing most of your app. And here you get to access various components, um, things such as labels, buttons, um, all of the default iOS components, and you can simply drag and drop them onto the screen like so. And once you have something on screen, then the right hand pane becomes really handy. The right hand pane are a bunch of inspectors. So when you click on something in your design or in your code, you might be able to inspect certain things about them. Now, by default, you will usually see the attribute inspector selected, especially when you're designing your app. And this allows you to change various things about the components that you've selected. For example, we can change the color, we can change the uh, alignments, we can change whether if there's uh, text shadows, and it's pretty much similar to any sort of other design program you might have come across like Photoshop or Illustrator. Now, there's a couple of other tabs here. Um, one that's really useful is the size inspector. And this one simply tells you the positioning of our component that's selected. So in this case, it's 144 pixels from the left and 228 pixels from the top. Next, we've got the width and height, which is pretty self-explanatory. And we've got lots of other inspectors as well, which we're pretty much going to leave as it is. But at the point where we need to use them, then I'll explain them in detail. So now that you see we have a label on screen, you can see that this little pane becomes quite handy. And this is what we call the document outline. So it shows an outline of all the components that are in your design file. So if you've ever used any sort of design software, you'll probably understand this best if you think of this as where the layers exist. So if I had two labels, one on top of each other, then we'll be able to see them both as separate layers inside our document outline. Now, if you don't know what a layer is or you've never used Photoshop or Illustrator, it doesn't matter. This is just where your components are listed. And as you drag on different things, such as a button and a label or a slider, then you see them show up. And sometimes when your design has a lot of these components, which are very close to each other, then it's actually quite hard to select the right one that you need. So it's much easier doing it inside here. But if you don't like this taking up the extra space, then you can just pop it away using this little button here. And all of these panes can be toggled. So the main toggles are for the three major panes. So the right side pane is here, the left side pane and the bottom pane. Now, the bottom pane is called the debug area. And this is where you get messages if your app crashes. So this is the area that is pretty much just for the developer. So while you're developing the app and you need to see what's going on with your app, then this is where we'll be looking to. And we'll be exploring that a lot within the course. So if you want to get rid of these screens, then you can always use these toggles. But if you prefer using shortcuts, so for example, to pop this bottom screen down, you can hold down the command, the shift, and press the Y key on your keyboard, and you can toggle that. And if you look inside the resources for this lesson, there you will find a list of shortcuts, which are commonly used with Xcode to speed up your workflow. Now, a word of warning, it does take a little bit of memorization if you wanna go down this route, and everything that you can do with the keyboard shortcut, you can always do with the mouse. So depending on what sort of person you are, you might wanna choose what kind of pathway you wanna go down, shortcuts or clicking with mouse. 
So now I'm gonna go ahead and delete everything that I have on screen. I don't need it anymore. And I'm gonna pop the bottom area away to give myself as much space as I can. And I'm gonna go over to the viewcontroller.swift file to take a look at it. Now, this is where most of your code will live. So when you want to change the behavior of your app, then you're gonna be writing some code right here. And notice when we head over to the code file, then the inspector tabs, they actually change. Because when you're in a code file, then you can't change, say, the color of your code or the uh, size of your code. So it doesn't make sense to have a size inspector or to have the color menu drop down. But it does have other things that are related to the code files, such as if you wanted to change the name of the code file or what type of file it is, then you might be doing it inside the inspector over here as well. So the right hand pane is for changing certain properties of what's showing in the middle. The left hand pane is mostly used for navigating between different files. Now, the last thing I want to show you is something to do with settings. So if you head over to Xcode and go to preferences and you'll notice that in the general section, you can change the appearance of your Xcode version. So you can change it to the light mode, which is what I currently have, or the dark mode, which you might prefer because it's easier on the eyes. Now you can also change the way that your code is being colored by going to the fonts and colors. And there's a whole bunch of different themes that you can choose from. So you can click through each of these and see what you prefer and land on whichever one you like. But I'm going to be choosing the default light version. And if you're a beginner to programming, then I recommend you choose the same theme as I have, because it means that all the keywords in your version of Xcode will be highlighted in the same color as mine that you'll see in the videos. And it just makes it a little bit easier to keep up with what's going on in the lessons. But if you're already a programmer and you have strong preferences as to what you like to see in your color scheme, then feel free to change that here. Now, more important than colors are actually the font sizes. Now, I know from teaching a lot of students in class, they like to have really small fonts. And I don't know if it's because I'm going blind, but I find it really hard to read um, font sizes that are very small. So if you have a font size that's this big, then it's really going to hurt your eyes after a few hours of coding. So make life easy for yourself. Increase the font size so that you can actually see what's going on. And the shortcut to do that is holding down command and hitting the minus key on the keyboard or the plus key on the keyboard and adjust it to a point where you're happy and you can see quite easily. For me, I'm going to keep that font a little bit bigger than usual, just so that you can see it easily if you're watching this on a phone or an iPad, but feel free to adjust yours as you see fit. So that's pretty much the grand tour of Xcode. Now, if you enjoyed the tour, then feel free to leave me a review. But in the coming lessons, as we come across different parts of Xcode that we'll need to use, then I'll introduce them to you individually as well. And don't worry if all of this is a little bit overwhelming. You can't remember which part was the navigator pane or the identity inspector. I'll always be showing you exactly where you need to go and what you need to do anyways. Plus, if you head over to the resources for this lesson, you'll also find a map of Xcode. So you'll be able to see the areas highlighted, say the status area at the top, the inspectors area on the right and the navigator pane over here. And it might just be worth getting used to some of those words that might be used quite frequently. And as well as for you to get used to the different areas of Xcode and their purpose. But now that we've toured Xcode, it's time to actually do some work and build the design and the layout of our app. So that's what we're going to be doing in the lesson. So I'll see you there.